The promotion of safety on a railroad is a community affair. It takes leadership, supervision, and the full cooperation of the employees. No one wants to meet with an accident, but each year many employees are the victims of avoidable accidents. There is a right and a safe way to do your job. There are many wrong and risky ways to do it. Get in the habit of doing everything in the right and safe way. The pictures to be shown were taken at the different terminals along our line of railroad from St. Paul, where you see the Empire Builder just leaving the Union Station, beginning its westward journey to the Pacific Northwest. Train 23 leaving Minneapolis. Butte. Whitefish Yard. Hilliard Depot. King Street Station, Seattle. Klamath Falls office and depot building, and various other terminals. We will first discuss train service accidents. These account for six out of each ten employee fatalities. We will point out some of the more serious of unsafe practices that are too often indulged in. Also, the right and safe way of doing the same job. There goes, there goes the known whistle. What happens as the men leave the shop? Some cross the tracks at various places to take the shortest route to their favorite lunch counter. The most prevalent cause of fatalities to employees is being struck and run over. One out of each two employees involved in this kind of accident is killed. They were trying to save a few seconds. For what? It doesn't make sense, does it? The employees returning to work, no longer in a hurry, are using the crosswalk, the prescribed and safe route. Another bad practice is taking shortcuts when the day's work is done. Here is a group of employees crossing a number of tracks, including two mainline passenger tracks and two mainline freight tracks. These men and women are risking their lives to save a few seconds. When you do this sort of thing, you not only violate the company's rules, but you forget your moral obligation to yourself to keep alive and free from injury. Mr. Carman, always look in both directions to make sure there are no cars or engines coming your way before stepping on or fouling adjoining tracks. You, young man, are surely carrying signals for the ambulance. Never walk on a track if it can be avoided. When getting off moving cars, don't foul the adjoining track. If you have to cross tracks and work around moving cars and engines, you'll find the job as safe as you make it, no safer. An X should mark this spot. One of our men was killed here, going around the end of a car as this man is doing. The rule is that you allow 15 feet when you walk around a car like this. For your safety, always allow the 15 feet. several ways to do a job, but there is only one right and safe way. Here a trainman working with an engineer stops to line over a switch located on the fireman's side. Then he gives the fireman a backup sign and starts to cross the track. It's all wrong and bad practice and dangerous. Watch this man do the same job the right and safe way. After he lines over the switch, he does not give a signal until he is back on the engineer's side. That's good railroading. Don't step on the rail. That's dangerous. Sometimes you'll see a man on the opposite side of the track from the switch stand, wait until the movement is well underway, then hurry across the track directly in front of the engine to get to the switch. What would have happened if he'd slipped?
This scene shows the same crew doing the same job successfully and safely, taking no chances. He didn't have to run across because he was on the right side, the safe side. Here's another thing. Don't cross tracks in front of moving cars. This man was trying to get to the switch and didn't make it. What a chance for injury. If you work in a railroad yard, always look both ways before stepping on or fouling a track. The cars can't look out for you. Make your slogan, look both ways and live. Take the trespassing problem. We realize the attraction that railroads have for boys. Three boys sauntering up the track with no thought of being in danger. In round numbers, there are 2,000 trespassers killed annually on American railroads. Contrary to very common opinion, only a very small percentage of those 2,000 are either hobos or tramps. Six out of each 10 killed are citizens of the community in which the accident occurs. All of us should take every opportunity to warn trespassers of the risks they run. If they were members of our families, we would take definite action promptly. If adults set a bad example, what can we expect from children? A block away is the overpass the company built for pedestrians. Why isn't it used? Coupling up air hose can be done safely. Carmen are protected by blue signals. Trainmen and yardmen normally do not have this protection. They must be alert. Here is a young man trying to couple up the air hose with his knee resting on the rail. He is not in a position to get away quickly if the cars begin moving. His foreman is telling him always to keep on his toes so that he can move quickly if the unexpected should happen. Employees working on repair tracks are protected by the blue board as well as by having switches locked with a private lock. An engineer sounds a whistle to come in on the repair track. The foreman gets his men out from under the cars. He removes the blue board, then he unlocks the switch. This is the right and safe way. Operating switches carelessly accounts for many injuries. Watch this operation of a ground throw switch. Wow, a painful sock, but it should never have happened. Why not do as this man is doing and prevent such needless foot injuries? Take hold of the ball of the switch lever and keep your feet back sufficiently to clear it. This is a Ramapo switch stand. On main line switches, they are equipped with a lock. On inside switches, they are equipped with a hook. After using, if equipped with a hook, see that the hook is put in place. If equipped with a lock, make sure the lock is put back into the staple of the switch and locked. This is important. And always take time to see that the switch point fits tightly against the stock rail. Getting on and off cars and engines improperly is one of the most prevalent causes of injuries. When stepping off the leading footboard of a moving engine, always swing off the end, clear of the footboard and pilot beam, as this man is doing. Too often we see employees stepping off directly in front of the engine on the end of the ties. This is wrong. Too frequently they are caught by the footboard when the engine drifts upon them. Again, you see the right and safe way to perform this act. Swing off the end, clear of the footboard and pilot beam. Play safe. This looks like a setup with the boys engaged in conversation and out of position. The foreman doesn't realize that he's at the yard office until the last moment and drops off between the rails. No chance to see what kind of footing. Evidently, it wasn't too good. He must have profited by his experience, but here he is standing at the end of the footboard, looking carefully at the ground conditions before alighting. But don't step on the rail, that's bad too. 
Here is one of our old employees coming down the gangway, facing out. Note the unsafe position of his heel on the step. He's also carrying his grip. There are a number of men injured each year doing this sort of thing, coming down from engine cabs the wrong way. Now an officer tells him to come down the steps facing the engine. His foot rests securely on the step when he comes down the right way. When he gets to the last step, he reaches up, gets his grip, and steps to the ground. You can see how much safer this is. Employees dismounting from cars or engines should always take time to look over the ground conditions where they are going to alight. The management desires to keep the property in good physical condition. There are bound to be times, as in this case, when there are obstructions that might cause a fall or a sprained ankle. Boarding trains carrying handbags which do not permit the free use of both hands is unsafe. Arrangements can and should be made to get handbags on the train before starting. These trainmen should have spread out so that both of them could board the rear end of the caboose. Flat cars and tank cars are not as well designed for boarding or alighting from as house cars. Occasionally you will see employees getting on these cars when there is no reason to do so. Sitting on the flat car or running board of a tank car might be more comfortable than standing on the sill step. But for your safety, always get on the car that has the best facilities for boarding. Riding on the footboard of engines between engines and cars is forbidden by the rules and is unsafe. But here again we find one of our young employees deliberately taking this risk. No doubt due to the fact that he finds it a little more comfortable to ride standing on the footboard than on the side of a car. If all of our foremen and supervisors would do as this foreman is doing, the practice would soon be discontinued and our safety record improved. This fireman has opened up the manhole cover of the engine tender before pulling the spout around. Wrong. When using the hook to pull the standpipe around, he stands directly facing the standpipe, placing himself in a position to become overbalanced and fall. Wrong. Falling accidents account for more than one-fourth of our casualties. When he has finished taking water, he pushes the standpipe back into place before closing the manhole cover. Wrong. Again, he stands directly facing the standpipe while pushing it into place. Wrong. The law of gravity needs no courts to enforce it. Here's the right and safe way to perform this job. When placing the hook over the standpipe, he stands sideways, putting his left foot on the railing to brace himself. There is no likelihood of his becoming overbalanced. After pulling the standpipe over the tender, he opens the manhole cover. When finished taking water, he first closes the manhole cover. Then he puts the standpipe back into place. Note how he stands with his foot on the railing while he completes the job. In keeping with a long established custom, the engineer is climbing out through the cab window with his oil can in one hand, using the narrow ledge, which is for emergency use only, to reach the running board. This has proven a dangerous practice and has caused serious injuries. It has been forbidden for years. Here an officer stops the engineer and directs him to do the job in the right way. There are good, safe facilities for getting down from the engine the correct way, as well as good steps and hand holes in the front end of the engine for getting up onto the running board. Why not do the job the safe way?
When riding on top of cars, stand back far enough from the end of the car so that if they are stopped suddenly, you will not be jerked off the end. This man is getting up too close for safety. His foreman stops the movement and tells him why it is dangerous to ride so close to the end of the car. He instructs him to stand well back and toward the middle of the car. Occasionally, the pin puller fails to get the pin, as happened here. But this man was prepared, and it was a good thing that he was. Falling accidents while operating handbrakes are occurring too frequently, largely due to the employee's failure to perform their work the safe way. We are going to discuss the different types of handbrakes that are universally used. The old-style horizontal wheel brake operated from the deck of the car. The platform brake with the horizontal wheel. And the power hand brake with vertical wheel operated from the brake platform. But let's start from the ground and work up. Going up, turn your foot partly sideways for secure footing, keeping a firm hand grip on each ladder rung. First, we observe him setting a deck brake, pushing on the brake club, but he is too near the center of the end of the car. If the brake chain or brake club should give way or slip, he would be headed for the ground. If you want to push on the club, then place yourself in this position. If the unexpected should happen, you won't fall off the car and be injured. Next, we have the platform brake with horizontal wheels. The way it's being set is wrong. First, there is a chance the man may be caught between the ends of running boards when he couples onto the next cut of cars. Second, if brake chain should give way or the brake club slip, he would be bound to fall. If you want to push on the club, get on the other side of the wheel. Should the unexpected happen, you would fall onto the car and not from it. If you want to pull on the club, then place yourself in this position. Right foot on the brake step, left foot on the ladder rung, and a firm grip on the top grab iron with left hand. We come now to the power hand brake with vertical wheel. This is the most efficient and safe hand brake to operate and is now in general use. This man is in the wrong position. He has both feet on the brake step and is using both hands on the brake wheel. This one is doing all right in setting the brake, but when he wants to release it, he lets loose of the grab iron with his left hand. Watch. All wrong. These brakes are so designed that you can obtain all the braking pressure desired by the use of one hand on the brake wheel. Never use a brake club in a power hand brake. Never let loose of the top grab iron with your left hand to release the brake or to use on the brake wheel to set it tighter. This brake is known as the one-man, one-hand operated brake. This employee is in the correct position for setting a power hand brake and is releasing it in the proper manner. Here are your safety factors. Your right foot firmly set on the brake step, your left foot securely placed in the ladder rung, and a firm grip on the top grab iron of the car with your left hand. We have illustrated all falling accidents with fair weather scenes. As the most northerly railroad in the United States, we have our full share of sleet, snow, and icy conditions, which increase the hazard of getting on and off cars and engines and the chance of slipping and falling. Heavier clothing retards freedom of action. Care should be used to wear the safest type of clothing for the work to be done. Be especially careful of your footwear to avoid unnecessary slipping. Remember, when you have your cap pulled down over your ears and your coat collar turned up, your ability to hear is restricted, making it necessary to do a better job of looking. Your eyes are your best protection. Remember, too, metal cars under these conditions are slippery. Here a hostler is getting off an engine which just came in from Winnipeg. Sub-zero weather. There is bound to be snow and ice on steps and elsewhere under such weather conditions, which requires that greater care be used. 
This hostler, however, was able to get down from the cab and get back again without mishap. We even experience slippery conditions during the summer months due to rains. Again, these conditions necessitate men wearing clothing suitable for the occasion. Accidents due to slipping and falling and getting on and off cars and engines can best be prevented by the individuals involved. We should all consider our ability and be mindful of our limitations. As we grow older, we become less active, especially in getting on and off cars and engines. Always consider ground conditions. Is it daylight or dark? How are we dressed? Are we wearing only safe clothing? If you are required to get on and off cars, knee-length coats are preferable. They give you freer knee action. Is the speed too great for safety? Or does our physical condition require slower speed? If so, play safe. Think first. Our management has eliminated literally thousands of restricted clearances in the past few years and intends to do so wherever it's possible. Employees should remember these are hazards common to every railroad. They were all here when we came and asked for the job, none having been built in recent years. We must familiarize ourselves with their location as we agreed to do when we signed the application for employment and use the care necessary to avoid injury. Here is the restricted clearance that employees create themselves. There is no worse trap one employee can set for another than to leave cars just barely in the clear. Always shove cars in on a track a sufficient distance to provide full clearance. The man riding the head end of this cut wasn't looking in the direction the cars were moving. He would certainly have been caught had the foreman not observed the condition and stopped the movement. This alert foreman saved the man from injury. Needless injuries in coupling and uncoupling cars are still occurring. This employee is riding the leading footboard, coupling onto a car of rails that have shifted. In trying to adjust the coupler with his foot, he could have been injured. To do this job safely and in accordance with the rules, get off the footboard before the coupling is made. Stepping in between cars to open or adjust knuckles as they are about to couple is dangerous, as those in the business know. This man is warned to stop the cars while they are at least 10 feet apart if it's necessary to go in between them for this purpose. He then can adjust the knuckles safely. Why take chances? Let's take a look at the end construction of our new streamlined cars. You will note that the diaphragm is as wide as the cars. To have any part of your body in between these cars when coupling is being made would certainly be tragic if not fatal. If you are in the habit of stepping in between cars while they are being coupled, stop it now before it's too late. Employees pulling pins are occasionally seen stepping in between cars, as this man is doing, in an attempt to uncouple them. He is being told by his foreman that such practice is forbidden and dangerous. If for any reason you can't get the pin on the car with the pin lifter on your side, stop the movement, cross over, and use the pin lifter on the other car. Here a pin puller is trying to get the knuckle open before making the next cut. Can you think of anything more dangerous than backing up in front of a moving car? If you slip or trip, you haven't a gambler's chance. 
To open the knuckle, wait until the car has stopped, then open it. The accidents discussed have been train service accidents. Now let's talk about train accidents. Only 6% of all train accidents involve personal injuries. But there's always a chance of a serious accident in which large numbers of people are killed and injured. Any train accident may be serious. Let's try to prevent all of them. 62% of all the reportable collisions are yard switching accidents from causes such as shoving track blind, not knowing how many cars are on the track, and not having an employee stationed to observe and control the movement, cornering cars while switching on ladder tracks, failure to properly secure cars with handbrakes, especially in yards where there is a slight grade. The last results in more damage than any other cause. A yard master is pointing out two derailed cars at the end of the runaway track to a student switchman. In making up a train, the men didn't have enough handbrakes on the cars, and when they shoved the track, a cut of 25 cars just simply kept on going. Luckily, no one was injured, but enough damage was done, and it caused a lot of delay. The same man is now instructed to ride this cut of cars down to hold 25 and tie them down with eight good handbrakes and is again warned always to be sure he has a sufficient number of handbrakes on the cars to hold them. Rule 99 reads in part, when a train stops under circumstances in which it may be overtaken by another train, the flagman must go back immediately with the flagman signal. record regarding rear end collisions due to failure properly to protect the rear of a train is good. Let's keep it that way by doing a bang up job of flagging whenever the rules require it. This is one time when nothing short of 100% performance is good enough. The Empire Builder is coming into town. The car repairer is right on the job with a blue flag, and here's what we particularly wanted to direct your attention to. The conductor delivers the train orders to the engineer, who reads them to the conductor. They compare time. Correct time and a uniform understanding of the orders by the conductor and engineer is certainly a good start for a safe trip. The other members of the crew, the firemen and brakemen, must also make time comparisons with each other, read all train orders, and keep in mind their requirements. Some very serious accidents have occurred due to exceeding the maximum allowable speed. The most serious of these accidents have resulted from exceeding the permissible speed on curves. Trainmen, especially engine men, must be alert to the need of complying with all speed restrictions, regardless as to whether they are provided by speed control signs, train orders, special instructions, bulletins, flags, or signal indications. Here is a 35 mile speed restriction sign placed because of an eight degree curve. The important thing for engine men to understand is that excessive speed is considerably more hazardous on sharp eight to 10 degree curves than it is on flatter curves, such as two or three degrees. Observe all speed restrictions. If there is to be any variation, have it on the safe side and never exceed the maximum allowable speed. This reflectorized sign is our standard approach yard limit sign. It's located one mile in advance of the yard limit board to give the engine man warning that he is approaching yard limits and an opportunity to slow down his train if need be to meet the requirements of rule 93. This is our standard reflectorized yard limit sign. Rule 93 is common to all railroads. In spite of it, Collisions occur in yard limits on all railroads, our own railroad included. Why? 
because instead of running at restricted speed, as this train is doing, too much speed for the time and place is used. Excessive speed is getting us into a lot of trouble that we can and must avoid. Let's give this problem serious thought. Here's a group of men who have been promoted to engineers. An officer is discussing the accidents we are having due to disregard of automatic block signal indications. Their attention is directed to a stop and proceed signal, and he states that no engineer would disregard the indication of this stop signal if he could get his train stopped. He says, come back to the next signal, and I'll explain why the engineer is not always able to comply with the stop and proceed signal. This is an approach signal, indicating proceed, prepare to stop at next signal. Trains exceeding medium speed must at once reduce to that speed. Here is where the trouble starts. If you respect the requirements of this signal, and control the speed of your train accordingly, you will always be able to stop at the stop signal. A train passes an approach signal. The engineer apparently has his train slowed down and is preparing to stop at the next signal if it should indicate stop. This approach signal is nearly one mile inside of yard limits. Another train passes the same signal showing approach indication. But this engineer doesn't seem to have paid any attention to its requirements. He's hiking right along. Hope he's able to stop at the next signal if it should indicate stop. Here's your setup. He's trying to stop, but he'll never make it. All because he didn't comply with the requirements of the approach signal. In conclusion, there is nothing that could be of more help in the prevention of accidents than for us as individuals to realize the value of self-education and to analyze our own regular procedure. In crossing tracks, always use the prescribed and safe route. Always keep a clearance of at least 15 feet when passing around end of standing car. Always look in both directions before stepping upon or fouling a track. Never walk on a track when it can be avoided. Never go between moving cars for any purpose. When riding on top of cars, select a safe place to stand, keeping in mind the possibility of slack action. When operating handbrakes, always perform the work in the safe manner. When getting on and off cars, remember always to select the cars with the best facilities for boarding. Learn the location of all restricted clearances and guard against injury when working about them. in mind all speed restrictions and control the speed of your train accordingly. Always protect your train as required by Rule 99. Remember to comply with Rule 93 when passing through yard limits. Always observe block signal indications remembering that it is just as essential to comply with the requirements of the approach signal as the stop signal. There is no point in taking unnecessary risks. It gets us all into a lot of trouble. Let's all do our part to make this a safer and better place to work. Know your rules and observe them. Keep in mind that safety is of the first importance in the discharge of duty. Why 
I risk your life.